please press star 1 from your phone. I would now like to turn the call over to Karen Northen. Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the fiscal year 2019 NASA Budget Request Media Teleconference. Uh, again, this is Karen North. I'm with NASA's Office of Communications. And joining us to take questions today is NASA's Acting Chief Financial Officer, Andrew Hunter. As a reminder, all NASA budget material is posted on the NASA website at nasa.gov slash budget. Uh, the slides for this media teleconference also are streaming live at nasa.gov slash live. I will now turn this over to Mr. Hunter, and then we'll take your questions. Sir? Uh, uh, just before we start, I just want to let you know that the, uh, the budget book, the detailed budget book, will not be posted online until Wednesday. I apologize for that. We had late-breaking uh, adjustments uh, based on the, uh, the budget cap deal last week, and this is a common phenomenon across the government, I believe. Um, so we, uh, we were given actually uh, $300 million more uh, last Wednesday afternoon, and we had to incorporate that into all of our, our products. Um, that, uh, that will be also exhibited in the President's budget as an addendum uh, that you will see in the President's budget request, um, uh, not the NASA piece of the budget, but the, uh, the President's book, um, an addendum for $300 million and alternative amounts for other agencies as they were increased as well. So our, our number went from 19.6 to 19.9, just to uh, uh, get that uh, settled. All the presentation material you have online right now uh, does incorporate that full $19.9 billion number. And our CJ material, our budget book material, will also um, uh, include the, the 19.9 uh, material. So we have online uh, this presentation that I'm going to walk through uh, relatively quickly. We have the strategic plan uh, that's been posted, the, the new strategic plan for NASA, a volume of integrated performance, and I believe, if not already, some uh, fact sheets, which uh, if they're not on there now, they will be soon. So I'm going to walk through this presentation relatively quickly. I'll just hit the highlights, and then uh, we'll take questions uh, at the end of the, uh, the, the uh, media telecon. The first chart. Um, it, it's really just the, uh, the, the setting uh, with the uh, Presidential Space Policy Directive number one. Uh, this budget uh, codifies um, that directive in a budget, in the 2019 budget. So the, the, the following tenets that you see there are woven throughout this budget and actually relate back to our strategic goals that you'll see in the strategic plan. I'm not going to walk through every one of them, um, but you will see uh, how we are doing each one of these activities. Um, and, and moving toward a, a budget uh, that will um, push uh, our presence deeper into the, into the space, um, into the solar system. Next chart, number two. Uh, this is a strong budget for NASA, $19.9 billion. Uh, it, it represents how we go about putting together a lunar exploration campaign with an eye toward Mars. Uh, you will also note that $10.5 billion as a subset of that amount um, is about the lunar exploration campaign. This budget refocuses existing NASA activities toward exploration. That is a very uh, conscious move um, in this budget. The only areas, and you will see this as well in the President's budget, uh, areas where uh, items have been reduced or refocused uh, include education, uh, w first, uh, the termination of the W first uh, um, uh, mission, and then five Earth science missions. And I'll get through. I'll walk you through each of those areas. Those are the areas that have been uh, um, refocused uh, to to uh, put uh, priority toward the exploration activities in the agency. The the we also continue building on the critical backbone elements for our future in deep space, and that includes SLS and Orion and the uh, ground system. Uh, we have our first flight in 2020 of EM-1, leading to Americans around the moon in 2023 with the EM-2 flight. So this will be the first human mission to the moon since Apollo 17 in 1972. Chart three. This, serves, this budget serves as a catalyst for growth of a vibrant American commercial space industry. Uh, the SpaceX uh, Falcon Heavy launch uh, was evidence of capabilities that can complement and build greater opportunities for LEO and exploration objectives. We have a lot of partnership activities already uh, on ISS uh, within our lunar robotics and science activities, and then uh, space technology where we have uh, 
our next step BAA is on habitation activity, habitation module activity. We, um, we establish uh, the, the Lunar Orbital Platform Gateway in this budget. Um, this is, becomes the initial exploration infrastructure orbiting the moon. This will drive our activity uh, with commercial international partners to help us further explore the moon, its resources, and translate that knowledge towards human missions to Mars eventually. The first element of the Lunar Orbital Platform Gateway will be a power and propulsion space tug in 2022. Um, this will use solar electric propulsion as an infusion element from the technology program over the last several years and will provide power, command, and data services to the module. <clears throat> This budget also develops a series of progressively more capable robotic lunar missions to the surface of the moon. Um, we'll have a new lunar discovery and exploration program in planetary science uh, that supports commercial partnerships. And I'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to it. This also uh, begins transition to commercialization of low Earth orbit and ends direct federal government support of the ISS, the International Space Station, in 2025. The, the, the way we are gonna go about doing that is beginning a new uh, program. Uh, we have $150 million uh, in this program in FY19. It grows a little bit in the out years. But that's to encourage development of a new commercial low Earth orbital platforms and capabilities. Uh, the, 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 as as government-sponsored ISS ops wind down, NASA will focus towards other exploration priorities um, as, we, as we do not, uh, in 2025, um, do not continue spending do uh, government dollars on, on that resource. Chart four, we continue robotic exploration of the solar system. We've got the next Mars rover launch in 2020 funded, uh, the Europa Clipper mission uh, funded for a 2025 launch uh, to uh, Jupiter's icy ocean moon Europa. We also continue uh, a, a world-class science um, activity uh, program with 10,000 U.S. scientists funded and over 3,000 competed awards. And we also have a focus Earth science program we do have uh, cancellations uh, proposed for termination in, in the same ones that were proposed for termination in the FY18 budget, PACE, OCO3, Clario Pathfinder, Discover, and RBI. RBI actually was just terminated in January due to cost and schedule growth. We continue exploring the universe with the launch of the James Webb Space Telescope in 2019. And then we cancel the Wide Field Infrared Survey Telescope, the WFIRST. And this is not uh, this is not canceled uh, out of uh, prejudice against the science, uh, but it's really a cost size issue uh, in terms of its significant cost as a flagship mission and, and the need for uh, funding higher priorities within NASA. So we w we will have alternative uh, lower cost astrophysics funding uh, with with remaining dollars in there. Five. We have a focus and integrated space technology effort, um, and we 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 have uh, uh, life support, power propulsion, advanced materials, communications, in space manufacturing, and on orbit assembly, in situ resource utilization, and human research. These areas are all uh, continued on uh, the, from from the portfolio we had, but more of an exploration focus. So you'll we'll see that more over time as well. We fully fund in aeronautics a supersonic X-plane, the low boom flight demonstrator uh, that has its first flight in 2021. And then the, uh, we've got a slight increase in our hypersonics research funding. We also continue uh, the important work we, we do in terms of uh, air traffic management improvements, uh, increasing safety and air traffic capacity, and the uh, unmanned aerial system integration into the uh, national airspace. Uh, we do cancel uh, funding for the Office of Education. Uh, this is not new. Uh, last year, it was uh, in the 18 budget that was also uh, proposed. We, uh, we had $37 million uh, remaining last year to close it out. Uh, this year, there were $0.19 in for education, but we do still continue fellowships and, and building on the, uh, uh, the enormous uh, mission capacity of the, the uh, the activities across the agency in terms of uh, inspiring our next uh, generation of explorers. Also, strengthen cybersecurity capabilities under our mission support activity. Chart six, a, uh, a summary, high-level summary of our anticipated accomplishments in 2019. 
you see in the advanced exploration systems that we will be starting the power propulsion element um, uh, work, the studies, the acquisition planning, partnership approaches, reaching out to industry. Um, and then we will uh, also uh, complete ground testing of the full-size prototype cislunar habitation activities. Exploration systems, a lot of work there, continuing preparation for our ascent abort test in April 2019 for the EM-1 launch ready in the state. And then the commercial crew, we uh, will continue uh, working hard toward uh, preparing SpaceX and Boeing um, to be ready for certification missions begin in 2019 so we can uh, get uh, commercial uh, crew uh, deliveries to uh, um, station. And we also see the James Webb Space Telescope in 2019 being launched. Um, in other science, we have a, a lot of activity there. I won't walk through all the, the elements there, but we also see use of emerging commercial lunar lander capabilities, and we should see a, uh, a mission of opportunity in FY19 there as well. And uh, in an exploration R&T, uh, three payloads are demonstrating uh, the laser communications relay, uh, green propellant and fusion mission, and precision navigation through the deep space atomic clock, and four um, uh, uh, pay, pay, um, technologies are delivered to the Mars 2020 mission. We also complete the CDR, the cr Critical Design Review for the Low Boom Flight Demonstrator in the supersonic X-plane. Okay, chart seven. Uh, we have several changes in our budget structure and our organization. I will quickly uh, uh, let you know what's changed here. Um, the order of the, of the account structure has changed with a, a focus on exploration uh, starting there. We have a new name uh, in, in deep space exploration systems. It's just name only, but it focuses on what we will be doing to get uh, humans into deep space. Uh, under that line, that account, we have a uh, advanced exploration systems line where the habitation systems and the lunar orbital platform gateway were funded. And then you see the exploration research and development line actually goes to zero. Uh, that's because we've moved elements of that, that line above into advanced exploration systems and down below into the exploration R&T line, research and technology line, which is a new name. Um, but that's the uh, traditional uh, space technology line in addition to the human research program and elements of the advanced exploration systems activity. So there's been some movement in the, uh, the technology um, activities of the agency um, are repotting, but the, uh, the the space technology line is is strong in this agency, and uh, and we actually have increased it a bit over the last um, last year's budget. The uh, the Leo and spaceflight operations that's a new name. We are focusing uh, that's where our Leo focus is with our ISS um, uh, activity as well as our crew and cargo um, services uh, that we buy. Um, from, from, from commercial providers. And then we also have a new line there called Commercial Leo Development, and that's, the, uh, that's where the $150 million a year is that grows a little bit in the out years to develop capability to eventually uh, have uh, private sector partnerships uh, um, uh, take over operations and use of, of, of uh, the ISS or other uh, platforms in, in low Earth orbit. I'll talk a little more about that. The only other account change here is that the JWST line goes away and is, is, is uh, consumed back into the astrophysics account where it originally came from and where it belongs uh, since it will be launching in 2019. Um, you'll see, you'll notice that the 2018 number um, is what we are what we operating at right now, uh, 19.5 billion. We anticipate that number changing uh, when Congress uh, 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 works the caps and and, uh, and 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 enacts an 18 budget, which we hope will be with before the uh, the expiration of the uh, the CR on March 23rd. And then we have the 18 the 19.9 billion dollar number in 19, and then it goes back down to a 19.6 billion dollar amount uh, in notional out years, flatlined. Uh, we also uh, uh, we also will, um, are anticipating a, about 81 million dollars in disaster relief and the hurricane damage in, in 2018 as well. Chart eight. This is our chart that that 
we continue to use every year um, just to show the, the amount of uh, launches and activity that this agency has under its belt. Um, the, the couple things I want to just point out here, the, uh, the red um, items on, in 19, 21, and 23, and, and 22 uh, highlight uh, lunar uh, missions of opportunity, and, and in 22, a robotic lunar lander. Um, the missions of opportunity um, in 19, 21, and 23 will be managed by, by science, and the robotic lunar lander one will be a, a, a human um, exploration and operations EO um, um, managed activity. Um, let me keep moving. The next chart, this is our graphic um, for the lunar exploration campaign. Several things going on here. We have uh, first focusing on the Earth and low Earth orbit. Uh, we're transitioning the U.S. to a human, uh, human, U.S. human spaceflight in low Earth orbit to commercial operations which support NASA and the need of a growing private sector market. Um, we, we will be doing everything we can to make that successful uh, and, uh, and create um, an opportunity for uh, NASA uh, to move beyond uh, low Earth orbit and focus on cislunar activities and, and, and moving to Mars eventually. The second thing that's happening here, of course, is that big moon uh, right in the middle of the picture, building on SLS, Orion, and uh, commercial capabilities that we've been developing over the last uh, uh, really decade um, since early uh, cargo, uh, commercial cargo activities. Um, we will extend long-duration human spaceflight operations to the lunar orbit. And, uh, and then, finally, you'll see the, the Mars um, enabling long-term robotic and human exploration of the moon as a preparation for human missions to Mars and, deeper into, and going deeper into the solar system. So this is a, a evolving capability, a growing capability over time uh, to get to that point. Next chart, this is the, uh, what we call the DNA chart. Um, it, was, it, it, it represents an agency-wide integrated research development program. Um, it, it, it represents progressive capability as you move down the chart. Uh, it's got four thrusts or, or, or strategies, um, and these are all enabled by technology and fusion and development um, and with industry and international partnerships uh, infused throughout. And I'll just walk very quickly through a summary of, the, uh, of each one of these four areas, the Early Science and Technology Initiative. Uh, this is where we're creating a baseline and technology that feed down. Um, for instance, using one, one core of the pristine Apollo sample uh, and, and the Virtual Exploration Research Institute, um, we'll, we'll get a, a baseline for science, for science work. Uh, CubeSats, which are going to be launched on EM1, for example, have... Uh, uh, which has several CubeSats um, flown inside the Orion stage adapter. Uh, they will, many of them will be taking lunar measurements. Um, the science program has $70 million worth of CubeSat activity spread across all its themes. So these will all be, um, uh, a lot of them will be focused on lunar measurements. Um, number two, the Small Commercial Lander Initiative. We've got uh, building on the lunar catalyst and tipping point activities. Uh, the, uh, and then the uh, commercial contracts for uh, transportation services with the small commercial landers payloads activities. We'll have small ra rovers uh, delivered via commercial landers, uh, building and launching instruments that serve lunar science and exploration needs. And uh, we, had this, we had an RFI out a year ago uh, exploring that, and then uh, we've got an RFP uh, in work now, which we anticipate awarding sometime in the next uh, several months. Moving down to the mid to large commercial lander initiative toward human rated lander. Uh, again, we're, we're looking at an RFI going out in February for mid commercial lander activity. Um, the, uh, the focus is, is, is uh, on how mid uh, commercial, mid -commercial landers in the 500 to 1,000 kilogram range will eventually feed forward for technology for the eventual human lander downstream. We have a lot of detailed planning, uh, obviously, um, that, that's ongoing right now, uh, and also the Lunar Orbital Platform get Gateway. Um, this will be the science platform and architecture to support lunar surface ops. Eventually, um, we'll have some kind of procurement instrument out this summer for proposals. This will be the place where Orion uh, goes 
uh, to the gateway, and uh, and you'll see uh, you know where we can work with astronauts taking samples off the moon, eventually um, working with the the, the human lander. Um, on chart 11, this is the just the the uh, subset of how we got to the 10.5 billion dollars for exploration activities across the agency. And we uh, just the total account numbers in, in in the first three accounts there: deep space exploration systems, exploration R and T, and Leo spaceflight operations. And we have a little bit of uh, um, exploration uh, construction of facilities funding that we add in there, and then the elements of science, which includes 200 million for the uh, the um, lunar robotics uh, discovery program uh, and, and some money for uh, the Mars Future Technology and then a little bit of money uh, for the, the uh, Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter uh, activity that we're funding there too. And that's the $10.5 billion. And you can see that, that um, uh, 12, let's move to 12. This chart really doesn't say anything new, which is good because we've got an awful lot of work <laughs> happening uh, to get the SLS Orion and the, um, the ground system ready for the EM-1 launch in December 2019, launch readiness, uh, uh, up to six months schedule reserved to a June 2020 agency baseline commitment. And then the, uh, the EM-2 for uh, a, a launch in, in, in 22, but no later than, um, I believe it's, uh, 2023, April or so at 2023. So um, a lot of activity there. EM2 will have the EUS uh, built into it, and uh, EM1 will be um, launching with the, uh, the interim cryogenic propulsion stage. Chart 13, the large growth area. This is this is the uh, the events exploration systems is where we we uh, include our habitation capabilities and systems, crew mobility systems. Uh, we've got about 268 million for HAB systems and capabilities, and we also have 504 million uh, for the lunar orbital platform, um, and uh, and 116 million for advanced lunar and surface capabilities. Uh, page 14. This is uh, our exploration research and technology. This includes all of the the, the previous the previous structures space technology line, including uh, the human research program and uh, pieces other pieces of uh, the AES uh, account. Um, but it grows um, uh, it grows a, a bit in uh, from 18 levels, and this is where we see the uh, focus areas of technology being worked on, um, and then uh, prepare, preparing for. Uh, the technology infusion activities for Mars 2020. We've got the uh, high-powered solar electric propulsion system that will be infused into the, the uh, power and propulsion element of the gateway. Uh, completion of the laser communications relay demonstration mission to support the 2019 launch readiness. And uh, satellite service activity, uh, HRP, and this is where we um, cover our SBIR, SPTR, small business activity as well. Chart 15, this is our International Space Station, um, about the same level of funding in, in 18 as in 19, uh, and this is where uh, we propose to direct U.S. financial support for ISIS in 2025. Commitment was 2024. Um, uh, the ISS crew utilization has been optim optimal in, in, with the addition of the fourth U.S. crew member in 2017. Um, new records for R&D payload utilization. We've had 76 payloads to the ISS, 31% uh, uh, increase from FY16, uh, carrying over 100 experiments. Um, so a very vital um, uh, uh, resource for this country and a place where uh, commercial crew and cargo is, cargo is being delivered and crew will soon be delivered by, uh, by U.S. companies. 16. This is the space transportation line uh, where commercial crew and services for crew and cargo is budgeted. The year really where uh, we actually have uh, funding for building commercial crew capability, uh, that line in the out years 2020 is just about all buying services for crew and cargo. Um, so we're, we'll be working with Boeing and SpaceX as they get patient flights in FY19. And 
Chart 17. It's the account where uh, a lot of the infrastructure and uh, uh, needed to put humans in space is covered. Our uh, space network, uh, ground segments, um, uh, space communications, navigation services is all in here. Uh, we we uh, have $100 million for next-gen capability for uh, uh, space network communications. We, we are initiating independent review of the uh, sp space network ground segment sustainment uh, project, and that will be completed this year. Uh, we we will, uh, um, our final decision on what to do there, is getting through the uh, operational readiness review will be deferred at the completion of that review, but we are um, looking at ways if, uh, if, if they did not get through their budget challenges in that, in that project. Um, and then we have uh, our, our launch services program and our NASA's rocket propulsion testing capability all on this line. Then we have the commercial LEO development. This is our new account, our new program uh, activity. Uh, we're, 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 we've made a significant investment in LEO. Um, we are going to look at creative ways to build commercial capability and more commercial crew opportunities. Uh, we anticipate conducting an open competition for public and privately funded modules and or platforms attached to the ISS or free flying um, platforms and FY18 with awards in 2019. Uh, we don't know what that's going to look like yet. It could include access to a port on the ISS or access to NASA's knowledge, workforce, um, financial support, in-kind contributions. We, 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 we will discover all this during the course of the, the competition and possibilities of uh, um, we'll allow interested parties to specify what support they desire from NASA, and, and we've got the funding to, to, to help that. Okay. Next chart, Earth science. Um, a small growth from 18 levels here, uh, a robust program, lots of activity. Uh, you'll see in each uh, of the science themes that we have a line uh, about investing in CubeSats cube and SmallSats. Um, and, you know, due to recent technological progress, there, these small satellites are suitable to address specific high-priority science goals, and uh, we can get a lot of mileage out of them. Uh, talk about the uh, termination of, of the, the missions there. And um, we, uh, we are working through the Earth Science Decadal Survey recommendations, uh, building that into the Earth Science portfolio. Uh, that prioritizes science questions and observations, and uh, we'll be working with uh, the uh, community doing that over the, next, over the next several months as well. A lot of activity in Earth Science. Next chart, uh, 20. This uh, planetary science uh, goes up as well from 18 levels. <clears throat> We've got the new $200 million a year uh, lunar discovery and exploration program that supports commercial partnerships. And I uh, mentioned a little bit about that earlier, um, supporting commercial contracts for transportation purposes, uh, transportation services, and, uh, and building and, and, and launching instruments that serve lunar science and exploration needs. We continue development of Mars 2020 and the Europa Clipper. There's no lander funded in this budget, uh, Europa Lander. Um, uh, that's, uh, and then the Clipper is funded at $265 million and the rover at $348 million. We establish a planetary defense program at $150 million, and that includes uh, the DART uh, and the near-Earth object observations at $60 million and $90 million, respectively, and the DART mission at $90 million. And then a potential Mars sample return mission incorporating commercial and international partnerships. Uh, um, we will continue to study that. And I won't read the rest of the really great activity that's going to be happening in, in the planetary science program there. 21, uh, astrophysics. This includes JWST and assumes launch in 2019, terminates uh, W first. Again, that is uh, due to a, a size um, uh, cost um, uh, decision um, and uh, the notion that a, a very large flagship was not affordable at this time and, and uh, the dollars could be used for uh, exploration uh, priorities. Um, this supports the test mission and uh, you can see all the other activities there, um, an active, an active uh, portfolio. Geophysics. Uh, uh, again, a modest increase from 18 to 19 levels. 
um, Parker Solar Probe continuation, the ICON uh, ready for launch, and the, the goal that was just launched, the gold mission was just launched. And then as an example with uh, our partnerships with ESA and one of our many international partnerships uh, continues the solar orbital collaboration. And there's a $3 million increase for uh, collaborating with other agencies to improve space weather observation and forecasting capabilities. Aeronautics, a slight decline from 18 levels here, uh, 34, about, about $20 million. Um, small reduction as we prioritize for investments and exploration. However, still um, retaining a very strong portfolio, uh, $88 million for the first flight of the Low Bloom Flight Demonstrator X-Plane in 2021 and uh, $30 million for hypersonic fundamental research. Um, uh, uh, continuing to develop and mature uh, subsonic aircraft technologies that dramatically reduce fuel consumption, noise, and emissions. Uh, flight testing in all-electric aircraft, the X-57, uh, continues. And then the unmanned aircraft systems operations in the national airspace. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, key technologies continue to be tested there. And new air traffic management tools. Uh, chart 24. Um, this this uh, rather sad chart here, I, you know, with with uh, no numbers and and <laughs> and uh, no pictures, um, just lets lets everybody know that we do not have any dollars in 19 uh, for education, uh, including its portfolio of grants and cooperative agreements. Uh, and again, uh, funds were redirected to NASA's core mission of exploration. Uh, we will have. Um, some function, of course, that, that coordinates education priorities and activities across the agency. The internships, fellowships, outreach activities uh, will continue. Uh, a, a science mission director at science activation program will continue at $44 million. And, and the broader uh, educational effects of our mission activity, of course, will be uh, coordinated with the mission directorates. And we're that again, that just a reminder that the education activity was was terminated in last year's budget as well. It's not new, um, but we are awaiting uh, congressional enactment of the 18 budget to uh, to see uh, what happens in this area of our portfolio. And finally, the safety, security, and mission services and construction account. This is. Uh, all the activity in our center, maintenance and operations, our, our uh, headquarters operations, our construction work, everything that enables all the mission activity preceding this chart to occur in the agency and, uh, and uh, focus on IT investments, cybersecurity. Um, no, nothing much new here, but um, a very vital piece, of course, of enabling the rest of the NASA mission to, uh, to occur. And then I just have a... Uh, one chart at the very end, which helps people um, put in words what we actually are doing in terms of uh, our budget alignments, um, and then our congressional justification. When it, when we post it on Wednesday, we'll have a, a description of some options we're looking at to realign the the agency uh, organization to optimize it to uh, have the exploration campaign focus. And Steve Jerzyk will be uh, the individual who uh, who is going to be looking at uh, organizational alignment, um, management alignment uh, over the next several months. And uh, we uh, we're looking at either a larger uh, uh, human space flight, including um, commercialization, LEO <laughs> operations, technology and development, all in one place, or or uh, perhaps two different organizations where you have a focus on LEO and space ops in one, and then a focus on lunar development and Mars development and, and the technology needed to enable that in, in another directorate. So that's all in work uh, will be looked at, and uh, we'll obviously have to work uh, with Congress on, on, uh, on, on, on getting that, um, uh, working with them as well. That's, that's, those are the charts. So. All right. Um, thank you, sir. Uh, at this time, we will open up the call to questions. The operator uh, will provide instructions on how to dial into the question queue. And if we want to go ahead and get started there. If you would like to ask a question, please press star 1 from your phone and unmute your line. If you would like to withdraw your question, please press star 2. One moment while we wait for the first question.
Our first question comes from Jeff Faust. Your line is open. Uh, hi, thanks for taking the call. Uh, regarding WFIRST, was there any consideration of descoping the mission to reduce its costs um, as a way of, of dealing with its uh, cost increases? And then what happens to the funding that was planned for WFIRST? How much of that stays in the astrophysics uh, division versus going elsewhere in the science mission directorate or elsewhere in the agency? Thank you. Yeah, hi, Jeff. Um, it, it, it was obviously uh, considered. Um, at the end of the day, uh, the, the notion of W first as a flagship was not was was not um, uh, considered. But we have taken uh, several, quite a few of those dollars. I'm trying to figure out what the actual line amount is that stays in astrophysics. Um, we've we've got about I'm looking at about 128 million stays in astrophysics. Um, or stay, at least stays in science um, from my initial my initial calculations. Um, but you can one of the other dynamic that takes place uh, when you've got a large flagship mission like that, you've got a large out year wedge, um, and with the budget staying uh, flat in the out years, we we were trying to show some growth in the uh, in the exploration activities of the agency. Uh, in the out years, and 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 that those dollars were provided by activities like education and W first and the earth science activities. We'll go ahead and go to the next question, please. Our next question is from Alan Boyle. Your line is now open. Thank you. I had a couple of mini questions. One is. Uh, are the dollar, dollar figures for the out years, are they constant? Are they inflation adjusted or, or are they, uh, what, what's the status of those numbers? And then also uh, on the fiscal year 2019 mission of opportunity for uh, lunar missions, uh, has that been, it sounds as if that's already underway. Maybe you could provide a little more information about the status of that. Yeah, sure. No, the dollars are constant uh, year dollars. Uh, we do we do not get inflation at this point embedded in our out year budgets. That's why they're notional. Um, every year we fight for uh, getting some inflation, uh, but uh, so far we, like the rest of the government, we haven't been able to uh, do that. And of course, some of that has to do with the the fact that. Up until Wednesday, the the, the caps were not um, increased through, and right now they're still not increased beyond 19. So uh, there's pressure there um, in in this tight fiscal environment for for that. On the, the other question was the um, the uh, the commercial lander uh, activities. Um, there there was an RFI about a year ago that went out uh, assessing interest there. Uh, we're working on RFP to be released sometime, I can't be precise, within the next two, three months on that. So we do anticipate the ability to have a mission of opportunity payload um, in, 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 in FY19. Okay, we'll go ahead and go to the next question, please. As a reminder, if you would like to ask a question, please press star 1 from your phone, and please ask only one question at a time. Our next question comes from Irene Klotz. Your line is open. Hi. Thanks very much. Um, it's a lot to digest. Uh, uh, how much money in the budget is there for the Deep Space Gateway tug, and when do you envision um, putting out an RFP for the launch of that since it's taken off of the EM2 mission? Yeah, um, I don't know the the uh, timing on the procurement there. Uh, I know there was a meeting just today uh, to discuss that, so I, I'm not at liberty to to put any schedule uh, information out on that right now. Um, in terms of the 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 lunar lunar orbital platform, we've got a total of 504 million dollars in 19. Of that. Uh, we've, we've budgeted about 328 of that for the uh, power and propulsion element. And then of course, we've got the habitation element that would follow that, uh, the airlock element, the logistics element. So we, we, we've, that would be spread over time as we get these modules uh, launched. But we've got to get early development times on those too. So Let's go to the next question, please. Jeff Warren, your line is open. 
asking this, and I'm going to violate the rule and ask one deep, just number question and then one big philosophical thing. The number question is, can you give us um, the totals already spent on W first and ISS from years, 30 years now, down, how much sunk costs are in those two? And then for the big philosophical question, you, uh, you're diverting funds from climate science and from W first, which is big cosmic questions, to study what some people say, hey, we've been there and done that for the moon. What is the big philosophical reasoning to go to study something that's been explored instead of other, you know, other needs that, you know, the National Academy of Sciences has uh, pointed to? Uh, yeah, first of all, I'll have to get back to you on the, the sunk cost on W first and ISS. I, I just don't have that on the top of my head. Um, in terms of philosophy, I'm a numbers guy um, by, by, by training, but um, uh, I don't pretend to um, make a judgment on that. What, what I do know is that, is that we're building capability for eventual human uh, exploration of, of, of deep space, and, and the moon is a stepping stone. It's a working environment where we can go and do that and build our capabilities over time. So if you put the long run on what, where humanity is going, um, that could be a, a, just as a, a strong philosophical argument for doing what we're doing. So, um, yeah, we can probably have a few beers over that one and, 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 and get, get some good conversation. Thank you, sir. We'll go to the next question, please. Kenneth Chang, your line is now open. Hi, thank you for taking the question. Um, you have $900 million for the transition from ISS to commercial. I was wondering how you came up with that and how is that enough to ensure a seamless transition? Well, I would say at this point um, we're going to figure that out. Um, we don't know the answer to that at this point. We haven't had those conversations with industry, with potential partners. Um, I think uh, that's work to come. Um, so I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't pretend that we're exactly precise on that. We, we have a lot of work to do and a lot of conversations and a lot of talking with, uh, with partners, partners and international partners, of course, on, on what that might look like. Okay, let's go ahead and go to the next question, please. Next, we have Jackie Waddles. Your line is now open. Hi. Yeah, thanks for taking some questions. Uh, so I wanted to ask, and I know Kenneth just asked you about exactly what the plan is for this um, transition money for ISS, but I was wondering if you could possibly speak to whether or not um, NASA will continue to support some commercial research missions such that, um, like the ones that CASIS will pick out and send up. I know NASA's contributed to the launch costs and covering astronauts' time for those missions. Uh, will you continue to support that going forward? Yeah, we're, we're fully using CASIS and station through 2025 in this budget. So through the budget run out here, which we only you know, plan through 2023 in this cycle, um, that's fully assumed um, continued use. Question, please. Mike Wall, your line is now open. Thank you for doing this. Um, just a quick question. How does the increased kind of like moon focus, I mean, does it change the, the sort of notional timeline for actually getting astronauts to, to like deeper space destinations, Mars in particular? Do you see that is still happening sometime in the 2030s? And just talk a little bit about how that might be affected by, by the increased activity at the moon. Well, I, all I know is that we will continue the, you know, the, 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 technol the technologies uh, required for, for uh, Mars exploration. We will be, in the short term, focusing a lot of that on lunar activity, uh, but those capabilities can continue to be projected on toward deeper space exploration. Uh, we got a lot to learn on, on how to do um, uh, you know, in orbit assembly, uh, human research continues, uh, the in space um, uh, in situ resource utilization, all those technology focus areas I mentioned earlier, uh, that will not go away. Um, so I, I, I don't think we'll, we'll be getting humans to Mars in the 2020s, but uh, definitely could be feasible in the 2030s. Uh, next question, please. 
Tom Risen, your line is now open. Yes, thank you. Uh, I'm wondering about uh, the budget mentions NASA transitioning from government controlled communication satellites to commercial control of communication satellites. Can you please specify, would that include the tracking and data relay satellite or others uh, that you have in mind? I, I, I'm not exactly sure of the question. Um, uh, that is probably more to do with the, uh, the lack of intelligence of the briefer here. Um, but you, you're talking about the commercial, the commercial networks. I mean, uh, the comms networks. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I'm going to have to. <clears throat> that one, I I don't know the answer to. So. Tom, this is Karen Northon. If you want to reach out to me after the call, I'd be more than happy to uh, look that up for you. Uh, if Sorry we about go that. ahead and go to the next call. Uh, next question, please. Lauren Grush, your line is now open. Hi, thanks for taking my question. I was wondering if you wouldn't mind um, recapping the money that's going to Lunar Lander development, and do you have an estimate for how much money will be put into development over the next few years or so? Hello? Yeah, I'm looking right now. I've got a, a large spreadsheet in front of me trying to see what we would consider. I, um, bear with me. We've got the, we've got the Luber, Lunar Orbital Platform Gateway activity, but that's uh, not what you're asking about. The uh, cislunar uh, and surface capabilities, uh, we've got about $116 million in, in 19 starting off there, but that's... Uh, that's the beginning of a of a of, of building that capability over time. For now, that's all I got. We might have to we might have to clarify that one. Um, operator, if we could go to the next question, please. Dan Regano, your line is open. Hi, thanks very much for doing this call. Uh, I'm wondering um, how much fiscal risk overall do you see in this budget? Um, you're, you're banking on SLS coming through on time and a bunch of other things, but you have flat budgets that will be declining over time. If um, things get backed up, you know, are you going to end up in a box not able to pay for all the things you want to do? Yeah, uh, it's a good question. Um, the, the last four or five years, uh, you know, if we've been watching the, the numbers, we, we actually get enacted, uh, appropriated more dollars than we request, which is, uh, which helps us greatly, of course, uh, reducing risk. Um, but we also still live with our agency baseline commitments with the dollars we have. Um, and, and we are still doing uh, very well in our performance on all of our science missions. Um, We've got record performance in terms of meeting our cost and schedule commitments. Um, I, I think as we'll know much more about how this uh, this uh, lunar exploration program uh, flows out once we get through the uh, the procurement and acquisition process and the planning process. We'll know a lot more in our next budget cycle um, to validate that. So um, that's all I got on that on that one. All right, uh, let's go ahead and go to the next question, please. Keith Cowling, your line is now open. Yeah, a question with regard to the space station and ending funding by 2025. What is NASA's contingency plan if the commercial operators don't show up? Is NASA going to uh, put a halt to its cis lunar plans? Is there a contingency fund? Or is NASA going to just stop using the station? And if NASA's not using the station, who now owns NASA's resources on the station if they're not using it? Yeah, that's all work forward. Um, I, I think we're, we're going to have to see what the demand is and how we can help uh, enable that demand. Um, I don't know the answer. Uh, that's still uh, quite a few years away, but we're going to start working on it um, this, this, hopefully this year and, and the next year uh, in earnest. Okay, let's go to the next question, please. Hillary, Hillary Brooke, your line is now open. 
Hi, yeah, thanks for taking my question. Um, I just wanted to ask what kinds of changes you're expecting from Congress on this plan? Like, is there any chance um, that NASA could get less money than what the Trump administration is requesting? Uh, there's always that chance. Um, I think 19.9 is a, will, will be a well-received number. Um, and as we all know, uh, once Congress has a, a, has a position from us, they can do whatever they want with that number. Um, that's their prerogative. So we'll be working with them to uh, explain how we believe this plan uh, is, is, a, is a cohesive, uh, collaborative plan that benefits uh, American public, industry, uh, um, international partners, and, and, and uh, I think they'll see the value in it as well. Okay, I think we're ready for the next question, please. Ken Kremer, your line is open. Thank you for taking my question. Um, my question is about the Power and Propulsion Module. Can you tell us why, why is it not on EM2 mission and uh, will it launch on some commercial vehicle? And are you going to replace that on the EM2 mission with, with some other component of the lunar outpost? What, what are the plans there? Thank you. Um, I'm just trying to think through the, 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 the question. It's not on EM, the, the power and propulsion element's not on EM2. Um, uh, we're, we, because that's going to be in 2023. We actually, we actually want an earlier, an earlier milestone um, on the power propulsion element, and there's a very good chance uh, it will launch on a commercial launch vehicle, um, although we will we'll probably look at SLS possibilities as well. Um, so it's, it's a timing issue. We want to actually get it launched uh, earlier. Hey, uh, next question, please. Stephen Clark, your line is now open. Thank you for taking my call. Uh, you mentioned, uh, Andrew, you mentioned the extra $300 million that was freed up uh, in the budget deal last week. Can you, you know, describe where the bulk of that went to in the budget proposal, mostly exploration, or was it divided evenly among the various directorates. Thank you. Yeah, it was it was evenly divided. Um, we we had about um, thirty million to the science account for planetary science uh, to support lunar science research. We had forty million uh, to the construction uh, for um, to fill some holes in our institutional CFF construction facilities um, uh, for uh, facility construction and demolition. We had about 90 million to the exploration R&T account um, for uh, exploration-related technologies, um, and then we had uh, uh, 75 million to um, accelerate transition from the communication satellite infrastructure um, to, to get greater reliance on commercial services and partnerships there, and 40 million on increased funding for the commercial cargo program. So it was it was uh, spread out, and and the president's budget actually has a, a sheet. Um, um, and and uh, on on the uh, the background of that, and this and this, that was the uh, administration's proposal for responding to the budget deal. Of course, that three hundred million dollars, and Congress is still deliberating deliberating that. So we'll ho hopefully see uh, movement in eighteen on uh, on where any additional dollars will be allocated as well. Okay, we have time for one final question. Uh, operator, if you could take us to that question. Quint 4G, your line is open. Hi, uh, thank you for your time. Uh, my question is about the $150 million program for uh, commercial LEO development. Um, I had some connection issues during the call, so I apologize if you've already elaborated on this, but could you please recap for us uh, when this program would ideally take effect and what exactly the program would look like? Yeah, it, it's a good question. Um, that's something that's forward work, but um, we, we hope to conduct an open competition for public and privately funded modules and or platforms attached to the ISS or could be free-flying uh, modules or platforms. Uh, and we anticipate we'll be uh, looking at that in 18 and then awarding in 2019. And, and at this point, it could be a lot of different kinds of things. We, we uh, 
during the course of the competition, there could be possibilities of including access to a port on the ISS dock, so to speak, or access to NASA's knowledge and, and, and workforce, uh, its capabilities, uh, trying to find, um, you know, give, giving, giving interested parties uh, a chance to, to see what they uh, desire from NASA and what we can provide them to, to make it more palatable to, to access and, and build capabilities on the space station or, or free-flying platforms. $150 million a year um, starts that process. Um, and in 19, we, we would make uh, awards for commercial module platforms capabilities. And then, you know, we, we could make upgrades to the ISS as necessary to support those awards. Um, we could make available specific accommodations for resources such as power, thermal control, uh, you know, other common ISS services and capabilities and things like that. So uh, more, more to come on, on what this looks like. Uh, so. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Um, we are going to hit, uh, wrap up the call now. I'd like to thank all of you for participating. As a reminder, all our budget materials are posted online at nasa.gov slash budget. Um, if you would like to stay on the line, the operator will now provide uh, details on how to access this teleconference replay. Um, operator, if you could please do that. Thank you.